All right, let me just tell you, this is quite a very sensitive day, so you better come here and be nice. <laughs> Good to see everyone, and I want to say welcome to Rumbi Uncensored, and trust me, we're going to have a very, very thorough conversation tonight. Woo! Yeah, finally. Can I tell you, deception is one of the most heartbreaking thing any person can ever experience, and I want to send some shout out, love, and respect to Nelson Chamisa. I mean, a 45-year-old be facing such kind of deception unbelievable but i want to tell you that uh, the rest of zimbabweans literally i mean you have the support people love you people believe in you i think that's all that matters mr chamisa so relax chill we are with you mostly good to see you everybody come through we're gonna have a, a thorough conversation tonight Ness, I'm, I'm so happy to see you people come through in your numbers please do me a favor be a sister's keeper and like the life because we need to pull everyone out to come here so we can have a conversation good victor Peter, the prophet of faith. Ooh. <laughs> Hilda, the prophets are here and we have quite a number of people. Very, very, very um, sensitive topic tonight. But I wanna, let me tell you, like I said to you earlier on, because I just think this is the time that we need to remind Nelson Chamisa that you have the support that you need. You, all you need to do is just chill and relax. You have us, you have the support, you have Zimbabweans with you, so relax and chill, brother. We are here to support you. Okay, we are here to support you. <laughs> Prophetess are here, which is so interesting. <laughs> All right, guys, wow, what a day, what a day, yeah, what a day. Yo, I know you know what's going on right now. You know that Mr. Nube is now the president of a Citizen Coalition for Change. <laughs> uh, yeah, ne? So we're looking at that, uh, absolutely it's hot, but anyway, they've got, I've got quite a number of things here. Also, you may defy, they fell on the other side, but anywho, we need to move on. Something has to be done. We have to talk. We have to really, really, really discuss this issue as um, an interesting one. But I wanted to remind you guys, because when, I know that I just want to give you an icebreaker, cheering you up a bit. You know what, you remember when we were doing the campaign, or when you were on the campaign trail, Okay, like I told you, I'm a sister's keeper. So today, while other people are joining us, relax, come in your numbers. And I want to tell you, if you're still supporting No Sun Chamisa, just drop your blue, drop your blue hearts because, yeah, <laughs> I'm still here. Chamisa, you have me. You have your sister here. I want to remind Zimbabwe and say, ah, 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 please. Huh? You remember? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. You have your sister here for the campaign. You understand what I'm saying? So chill. <laughs> Mr. Chamisa, relax. Don't worry about the yellow. We're going to put a blue there. We're going to put a blue there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Good to see everyone. <laughs> Yo, I don't lose. We don't lose the battle. Are we? We can't. We don't give up easily. I want you to prepare. Prepare. Chamisa <laughs> is us. You know, we are the people who support this movement. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. 
God is so good, y'all. God is so good. <laughs> now it's blue, it's no longer yellow. We have left these people. We are moving on with Chamisa. They must stay right there. We're good here. Chamisa, who? <laughs> Yes, guys, good to see everybody. And I want to say welcome to Ruby and Censored. Tonight, we're going to be looking at. Listen, y'all, we don't give up easily, right? And I want to tell the devil, shut up. You know, we don't give up easily. When we start something, we wait until we are done. We have to cross. It's not negotiable. You understand? We have to cross. <laughs> I'm so excited tonight. Um, yeah, deception. Yeah, deception. But let me tell you something. Uh, apparently, apparently, the first thing last year, I've told you that I only started following Zimbabwean politics last year because I was really hurt. Every time I would travel to Zimbabwe, I'll see people really suffering and struggling. I was like, no, man, we need to have a way out here. What can I do? I have to stand up and also play a part. So I began to support uh, Nelson Chamisa at that time. You know what I mean? I really, really went on a comment show. I meant business. You know, when I do something, like, no, I told you, until we cross, I'm not giving up. I'm here. Whatever it takes, we have to cross, you know. Someone asked me one day, it was like, you know, are you on Chamisa's payroll? No, 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 I don't get paid to, to, to seek for my freedom. No, I don't need to be paid to do so. I just do what's right for me to cross. I want a Zimbabwe where everyone is treated the same, where everybody's willing to succeed. I want to see, I want to see, you know, the greatness in us coming out. I want to see success. I want to see the young fulfilling purpose. I want to leave a very strong legacy for our children. That's where I'm here. I think each and every Zimbabwean should play a part because if you don't, life will play you. So, yeah, I'm here. I'm not going nowhere until we cross. We have to cross whatever it takes. But, like I told you last year, because it is so important for us to really understand the background of what is playing right now. This thing is huge, it's bigger than what we think. You're going to see as we move along because I'm going to paint a lot of pictures that will help you to understand what is really, really going on right now. What's going on right now is really just boils down to power. It's an issue of power grab. But I want you to follow through. Because the first video that I listened to, I remember last year, was um, actually a video for, for uh, that was Gifty Mugano at that time, Professor Gifty Mugano, and he was at Friday Drinks with, uh, with Tinashe. I remember that thing helped me so well to understand what the dynamics that play in the country, you know, as far as our political space is concerned. So I'm going to play you that video. I want you to pay attention very closely. You will get to understand why we are in this quagmire. Because what, what, what's going on right now in the politics thing is too boils down to the fact that it's all about power. Nothing else. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is why I think, honestly, to be a professor, hmm, okay, we'll dig more into that. But let me just play this video. You must pay attention. Like I said, we will pay attention. No emotions, but because we need to catch the devil by the horn. We're not playing. Tichabata Satan by the horn. We're like, we have you. Our eyes are direct on you, so you can't escape. We, <laughs> we can't escape. We have you right here. So, like I said, just relax. Pay attention to what's going on in the country right now. Go ahead, please. Because I, my, the feeling I get is the sixes and sevens are really driven by the election cycle. That we are, yeah. in essence, uh, in an election season. So what I want to understand from you, Prof, is um, election, election cycles and the economy. What is the true cost of an election in Zimbabwe? You're quite a, it's a very important question. But, um, Good to see you. I think to quantify the cost from your market point of view is very difficult. But uh, I would want to combine election and politics uh, so that I'm able to show you the disaster which politics has played in our economy. And I will take you to 14 November 1997, uh, when the, uh, the Black Friday uh, took place. And the, in essence, if you look at the events, because why I'm saying so, we have gone through 25 years in the same uh, cycle. cycle. Yeah, yeah. cycle. Yeah. Um, the major drivers of the Crash of the Zimbabwean dollar was the issuance of uh, an budget, uh, money to war veterans. And the, clearly at that time, there was a lot of political dynamics. There were civil unrest, there were riots. So government, whenever there is that kind of instability from the society, they always use money to pump. And we, 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 we lost investments. 
and that's when we begin to test the genesis of, uh, of capital plant. I want, to, I want to just inject yeah. Yeah. a fun fact there. Mm -hmm. So uh, Delta had its briefing this week, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that we learned was that um, you know they, they did four million uh, hectoliters of uh, sorghum beer for their uh, March 2023 year year end. Mm -hmm. um, that's the second highest sorghum uh, beer sales that they've ever had. The highest sales they had was in 1997, okay. um, when those lump sum yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You see>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. payments were made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. I thought it was a fun uh, anecdote. Yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah. you know. mm -hmm. yeah. so, so you're looking at it from an opportunity cost yes, correct. perspective, and correct. you're saying that this has been running now for close to 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. And every five years what tends to happen is when there's political pressure of any sort from any constituency the government panics yeah. they resort to just money printing correct then if i can now add on to what we, you are saying what the father said now when we were in the early 2000s we knew that the cost of the election become quite expensive the month of the like the year of the elections uh -huh. But in recent years, starting from 2013 and 2018, elections mode starts after the election. So if you look at 2018. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. 2018, <coughs> um, 2013, I think 2013, when we ended the unit government, in, in, uh, when Arab BT had a budget surplus, it was averaging $250 million, US dollars. And the US on the mode of we eat what what we kill. Now you are talking about the cost. <coughs> the minister Shinamas came in immediately after uh, after taking over his Zanzibar government, uh, control government. He began now it with the, the delete of uh, the port, and uh, we re we moved from a budget surplus of uh, 250 million dollars to 2018 August. Uh, National debt of 9.4 billion dollars, right? In five years. Yeah, in five years. Because now you are, that's where you begin now this uh, command agriculture, you know, oh, uh, and services. You see, and the, on one August after the elections, there was shooting, yeah. and the minister uh, finance came in with his uh, budget and which it was surplus. Yeah. The surplus, which was never been a surplus. And you saw what happened on our current cycles, how we lost our, our zip dollar, and uh, how we have lost on inflation petrol. And uh, what did we get in between? We get command agriculture, we get from Buta, we get uh, prestige our goods, prestige our poultry, prestige our cotton, prestige our horticulture. Everything is it's with the prestige our suffix, a uh, prefix, sorry. Right. So what has happened is means we are now using money. Uh, to campaign from 1 August 2018 to date. The budget for 28, which is my last point, 2023, 4.5 trillion, when it was presented, it was massive. There were no supporting fundamentals to qualify that side of the budget because the GDP was expected to grow by 3%, but the increase in the budget was about 100% of the previous budget. You get what I'm saying? So, so that, and if you look at its allocation, which is very important, Going to ministries which have to do the politics, your defense, your war of the uh, it's going to agriculture, you know, uh, it's going to um, even uh, places office getting 160 billion dollars, right? So, so the point I'm making is that our budget also reflects the mood of the election, and that's why you see when we discuss further, the rate is, is running up. What is the cost? The cost is quite massive. Okay, so you know, our primary audience is business. And we get worried because in all our analysis, what we tend to look at is the cost of the actual election. So, you know, the six months before the election. And what you're coming out and actually telling us is, guys, that's actually the, yeah. the, the more benign expenditure. Mm -hmm. What comes after yeah. is even worse. Correct. So then my natural question to you is why? No, it's very, very simple. It's an issue of sustaining power, maintaining power. Mm -hmm. Uh, African politics is very simple. Uh, those who are in office, if you look at uh, even some of the things I was asking when I was looking at the expenditure, last year government was saying they're going to be putting three, they're going to be supporting three million households. 
with the proposal. But when you look at Simstad's figures, we have around 2.5, below 2.5 million households. So already the, the budget is actually for more than... Yeah, it's actually 3.8 million yeah. households. Yeah. When Zimstads is actually saying that uh, all our yeah. households are three million, yeah, the entire yeah, nation. Yeah, the, 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 the variance. Mm. So the whole idea is to buy votes. I mean, there's no question about that. Uh, so you, are you saying that they start buying votes at the beginning of the five-year cycle? Exactly. So <laughs> yesterday is we used to know that the elections will, they will be most in the last six months, and the government would actually be here to the complaint of civil servants in the last six months. You know, if you remember yesterday, yes, the teachers will be given their money. Now, the government don't listen to teachers, they don't listen to nurses, because they have seen that they don't vote for them. <laughs> you see, they listen to the constituent where the votes are coming from. That's why you will hear from votes. That's why you will see Commander Agriculture, uh, the Rural Development uh, uh, Program, which is for the eight uh, focus areas where you talk about the goats, the chicken, the poultry, the fisheries, uh, cotton, horticulture, innovation, and, and the invention. The idea is to make sure that the electorate is very happy. But the challenge which you are facing in our business, as you are saying, when you are having a subsidies and distortions, it affects the normal running of markets. Because, for example, if I am in the value chain of agricultural sector, as an example, very difficult to contract farmers who are supposed to be at the retirement of contract farming when the very same farmers are being given free inputs. That's why you see that we are in short supply of uh, basic commodities like soya beans. But we are not in short supply of tobacco. Why? Because tobacco, there's no elections in the election year in tobacco. Okay. The market system is working. And we are exporting. We are going to five in the world. Yes. So that, that, that's the basic thing. The, the business sectors in that value chain where there is campaigning, they suffer the consequence of subsidies. Rufar, what's your view on that? All right, guys. The bottom line is where we are right now is simply a power dynamics that is at play. Because you, you heard, you heard what Professor Gifty Mugano said, is every time when, ele when I mean, I don't want to call what happened last year an election, because honestly, <laughs> what I saw is not what I was expecting. So pretty much, for me calling it an election, I feel like I'm just deceiving myself. Uh, but what he's actually saying is, the moment you think you've done with elections, they are starting another election. So their goal is just focusing on elections. It's all about power grab. We must keep on being in control which is not what I want to pursue right now, but all I want to talk about is us as a people. Apart from the people that have got power, let's talk about us as a Zimbabwean people. We can see what's, what's playing right now in the opposition party, that Misa Washmenwe is now the president no, of Citizen Coalition for Change, where they're saying they're going to rotate at the president's I mean, uh, post. I was asking myself, how much have these people, uh, you know, la you know, have as far as the issue of power is concerned why do they love power so much like I, i've never heard where three presidents must rotate number one i'm not surprised why nelson chamisa left these guys i'm really not surprised because i don't even know how did he survive thus far i don't know how he survived because those people are dangerous they're deceivers like, you, you, can, you can't, you cannot, you can't, you can't, I cannot even begin to fund them. Now, this is the tender meeting that we know, I saw my vocal in parliament. I cannot even begin to fund them. That this is actually, you know, um, you know the professor, Boshman Nube, whom I respect, a professor to cry out loud, that can think the way they do. Oh, let's not even talk about this. What about my core? <laughs> you know, my core goes to the church where I used to go, AFM church, and I was like, what kind of Churching is happening with this mama. <laughs> you know, what is she learning and what is she even... I can't even begin to fathom that. You are, you are a person who's preaching, you're singing in the church. She posts pictures all the time when she's singing the church and you're deceiving people. You remember when she was singing with old people last time on the campaign trail? My horror, she was busy dancing with the old people. And you still come back and deceive the very same, you know, guys that you know that they're actually suffering. It's sad. It's really sad. But let me just read this um, message that was sent out by Professor Gifty Mugano. Very important point. He said, Love, life teaches so many things. In recent weeks and days, I was left with no choice but to accept that, contrary to the notion that highly educated people and thought leaders, especially professors, are selfless, 
care, cares about weak people and are bridges to prosperity. The reality is that they are the most selfish, self-centered individuals and authors of impo impoverishment for the weak. Of course, in my lifetime, I refuse to follow the path of these betrayers, but, but will keep my conscience alive. I always support ethos and values which seeks to uplift the poor and will never support anyone who is selfish, self-centered, and cause untold suffering to the citizens. For avoidance of doubt, although I am still on sabbatical on issues affecting my con our country, because of time sensitivity of the matter, I found it defeat that today I unequivocally state that I stand with Nelson Chamisa. Sir, Professor Gifty Mugano, whom I think he should be the, 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 the uh, Minister of Finance, in the new Zimbabwe, he should be the Minister of Finance. We need men and women of, of integrity. This, what we have currently, is the most disgusting, disgusting people ever. I'm shocked. And I, I, all I can say to you is, one of the days I used to respect the academia, I don't. Like, honestly, let me tell you, if this is how education can make you behave, then I, I'd rather be illiterate. I don't want it. A professor... If you can look at the way the Professor Jonathan Moore is behaving, Professor Washman Nguwe, today with Nima Vokan Tower in Parliament, I cannot begin to fund them that these people literally gather together to destroy the poor. To destroy the poor, their own brothers, whom they saw suffering in the country. I just hope this is a game. It's like we are dreaming, you know. It's like we are dreaming. I don't want education if that's what you, that is, if this is how you should behave when you're educated. This is why I've always rebuked people and they say, no, we are the most educated people. Excuse me, are you really the most educated people? <laughs> because if you can be played, but let me tell you, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to say this because that's, I think I need to say the way it is. One man is playing a lot of men. Don't forget that there are some people who claim that they're, they actually self-taught. They are playing the so-called professors and lawyers are being played by the uneducated community. They take the money from you, they come back, they play you the game, they give you the same money that they take away from you. I'm, 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 in sh like I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Honestly, I'm baffled. Like, I can't believe, I cannot believe that these are professors that we are talking about today. But anywho, Nelson Chamisa made it clear. If you remember, on the 22nd of December, Nelson Chamisa sent out a message. He said, hey guys, zibude pa chena. Tishike taka chena. Dizo mchuona taka no noga utipana ne zigaro. Tedave nyota yesimba ne makaro e zigaro. Wabude pa chena. Masiri ano neza kuchenge teza. Unona, unona paspa tota ne havi. Then he said, LOL. That was Nelson Chamisa sending this message. These people literally saw the struggle of oppositions. Now they, now they are struggling to actually know who is the leader and who is the... All of them are simply telling each other that we are all presidents. <laughs> now the question is, then your, your, your logo, who is going to be the face of your logo? Now that you are held on to Nelson Chamisa's face, now that all of three of you, you are claiming to be part and parcel of this movement, who is going to be on the face of your logo? Because Nelson Chamisa wanted his face back. Ipai Nelson Chamisa face yake. Mupei face yake back, Nelson Chamisa. Now three of you, he said, my face is papo. You said, oh, three, no, no, it's, there are three, right? Tendai biti, wash menguwe, and makore. Wash menguwe. Tendai Biti, Mahore the Midu. Three of y'all, put your pictures there on the logo. Give Nelson Chamisa his photo back. Do you understand? Mupei picture yake. I can't be like. Mahore for real. For real, for real. For real. You betrayed the struggle. You remember when he was saying, Chamisa Kakata, Chamisa Donza, Chamisa Oe. I'm not surprised when they say the people that deceive you, the people that can even kill you, are those that are always very close to you. I'm not surprised. They've proved beyond reasonable doubt that these people are deceivers. They are, they are liars. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it, honestly. 
This morning, apparently, Nosu Chamisa sent a message. He said, the imagination advantage. Imagination is the spark that ignites the fire of invention and the flame of innovation. That passion is to create the novel and new. Always go disruptive. Hashtag imagine it. Hashtag Sabbath nuggets. Hashtag imagine the Zimbabwe that we want is around the corner. Yo, let me tell you, it's around the corner, so relax. And then, Edwis asked a question to President Elson Nelson I said, President, you once promised something called solid leadership learning. Understandable, you have been busy, but now maybe you can. And he said, everything is set and ready. Solid curriculum, structures, and everything. So Chamisa said, everything is ready. We have solid curriculum, we have structures in place, and we have solid of everything. Yo, like I said, we want a website to be up, sir. Mr. President, we want things that are... So, is, this generation is not interested in, in a, a strategy ambiguity. Yo, we, not, we want things. Transparency is what we want. Because we want to show the elders that no, we are very much intact. We can't be manipulated any longer. Only the old can be... Maybe they need money for retirement. We have so much ahead of us. We can't sell. We can't sell our soul. Not, not, not now. <laughs> we can't. I can imagine me selling my soul. No, I cannot. You can bring, I've told you, you can bring a million dollar here. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to, I'm not going to leave the struggle. You know why? Because I've got a future, y'all. Maybe I'm going to be a billionaire in the next five, ten years. And you want me to sell my billionaire life for a million? Sorry, I'm not going to take it. My purpose is not worth any cent. No money can buy me out of anything that I need to do. My purpose is, is very intact and I know where I'm going. You can bring all manner of money you want. I'm not going to take it. I'm focused on the goal. The goal is to have Zimbabwe free. It's as simple as that. Non-negotiable. This country must be free by all means necessary. People must fulfill purpose. Young people need to find jobs. We can't keep on relying on bootlicking any longer. We are sick and tired. Our people are saying no more bootlicking. A teacher does say bootlicking. We want to keep our focus. And today, apparently there were citizens who met in Johannesburg. No, I was not part of that, but there are citizens who met today discussing about the struggle. People are saying we are not leaving Nelson Chamisa. We are with Nelson Chamisa all the way to the end. Chamisa till the end. We are not giving up. We aren't giving up. They were in Johannesburg. I wasn't there, but people were in Johannesburg today. <laughs> Zimbabweans are adamant. They want Nelson Chamisa as their leader. They want Nelson Chamisa as their leader. Now, Max Lyon, he said, politics is changing, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Just know that. Politics, they go cut them corners, they go they get a snap on them, snap corners, wasting people's time. It's gone. Sirs, brothers, uncles, fathers, it's gone. We aren't going to have it. The Zimbabwe that we want is going to be a solid nation, a nation of respect, a nation of love, a nation of ideas. You're going to be on the, you compete with ideas, not compete with manipulation and greedy. It's not going to work. Leaders who are comfortable with mediocrity will struggle going forward. Unfortunately, the Zimbabwe we are getting into, if you're a mediocre person, you have no chance no chance. People are fed up. No deception, manipulation, and incompetence will be tolerated going forward. People want better politics. All the gimmicks that happened before the 2020, 20, uh, sorry, 2023 election will not work in the next Zimbabwe. It will not work. When leaders fail to understand what is happening in their political environment, they subsequently make the wrong cause. Your leaders have not evolved in decades, hence the stagnation. People are tired of excuses, finger pointing and blame game. The change that is happening and the change that is coming will be a shock to the system for, for out of the touch of leaders. They can't control the, what is coming. The days of blind followers defending failed leaders and dictating how politics will be conducted are gone. Your days of peddling illusions finished before the 23rd of 20, 2023 election is gone. The birth of an ideas-driven politics has come. The time has come for politics to be conducted in a manner it was intended. Personality and populist delusions have not transformed anyone's life. We can't be subjected to ideas and in conventions that cannot be challenged by virtue of an alleged high power. This is a season for a paradigm shift, 
It is not a season for repackaging old and failed systems and making them appear as new. That deception ended in 2023. It is time for order. It is time for responsible leadership. It is time for accountability. It is time for ideas. Old ways, not any longer. We are focusing on the new. So we are on our way to a new trajectory of politics. Enough with people who are always causing problems. Enough. Enough. But I was surprised because I think in 2019, apparently, you know, Simbachikanza, shout out, brother. Shout out whenever you are. Apparently in 2019, Simbachikanza had made it very clear. He said, Ngobe and Ibita are not good for our movement. They did a great damage on the movement and looted assets in the form of vehicles, cash, respectively, but yet they have woodwinked us again. Today they are aiming at the jugular. Um, that is the vice president of MDC. Surely it would be out of sync if we elected this uh, Judas is back into the party. They had destroyed us before and today they are back. This they would do it again and again if we don't stand firm and stop voting for them in the upcoming Congress. Listen, it was very clear. I'm also a firm believer that people's person, sometimes a person's character may not change. It takes, it takes a lot of hard work to change someone's character. These people never change. They're deceivers. That's who they are. They pretend. They hoodwinked us. As we didn't even see that they were lying. You know, I used to believe in Tendai to Remember when this whole thing started? You remember when I was like, no, I don't think Tendai I was like, I believed in this brother of mine. But you know what he did? Slap in the face. Why, Mr. Beatty? I'm disappointed with, with I'm disappointed in you. Also, Mr. Nguwe, I'm very, very disappointed. I'm disappointed. Extremely disappointed. Now, disclaimer, disclaimer, guys, disclaimer. Be in mind, there's an issue of money here to be collected for Citizen Coalition for Change. So whoever connects the money has, is the one that saw the struggle. Because now there is a fight between uh, Shalangu and his bodies and also this group of BT washmen. Shalangu Baiza said, no way. We are the one who did the work. You can't take the money. They are saying also the money belongs to Triple C. Remember, we've got three factions here. Shavangu, this one for BT and Mafume. And we also have the one that Promise Mukonanzi was calling the legitimate one. And Sue saying our president is Nelson Chamisa. And so now we're going to listen to Mafume now. Mafume read the, you know, the statement. He's the one that declared um, you know, on behalf of this Triple C that betrayed us. Um, so I want you to take a listen to Mafume. You know what? He was sitting there. There were very expensive water bottles. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe Mafume could do that. But it's like I believed in this man. Actually, I thought he was a good guy. But, you know, he let me down. He let me down. Mafume let me down. But take a listen to him. Yeah. This is sad. Honestly, like I said, I'm just thinking about the great mothers and all. Sorry. To fill in the vacancy left by Advocate Nelson Chamisa by appointing an acting president. The acting president position will be held by the three vice presidents on a 90 days rotation basis until the party goes to an ill elective Congress. By a record of the May 2019 World Congress and within the context of the leadership of the party president, 22 January. 2020, Professor Washman Newe is the most senior of the Vice President, in consequence thereof, the NSC resolved to with immediate effect appoint Professor Washman Newe as the Acting President. Professor Washman Newe will be the Acting President for 90 days, calculated from the day following the announcement. As previously communicated, the NSC re-emphasizes the importance of keeping unity and cohesion in the party. The NSC noted the uncertainties created by the departure of President Nelson Chamisa and delayed the appointment of the acting president, negatively impacting on the generality of our membership and the people of Zimbabwe more generally. The acting president bears the responsibility to steer the party towards democratic transition, securing a prosperous Zimbabwe, the appointment of the acting president and the resumption of duties by all office bearers based on 2019 structures marks the beginning of an uninterrupted path to restore stability 
and the democracy within the party. You feel in the vacancy left by advocate Nelson Chamis. Sorry, my bad. All right, so yeah, you heard my former speaking. Sorry, it's the, it's the humidifier. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I hope you were like, what is that? what's happening? You know, something is just kind of. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. All right, you heard my former. Okay, you heard him. <clears throat> wow, wow. So what, what you know what what flabbergasts me is my former literally worked so tirelessly to remove Ian Macon, who had been voted by the people, was removed, recalled, and removed. Remember, and then we voted for another, another, uh, you know, mayor as well. He was also removed so that he could pave the, a way for himself. Wow. Wow. And, you know, I didn't know that this man can, I, I, I didn't know this. I mean, the politics in Zimbabwe are this bad. Like, literally, they are bad. Like, people are so evil. Like, they are wicked. They are, like, it's, guys, when they use the word selfish, selfish sound a bit nice, you know. Like I said, I don't like to conceal stuff. I love to use the right words. People are evil. They are so evil. I can't believe. I cannot believe this. I can't. I cannot believe. I cannot believe he did that. What can we say? It's just a season. Is that season where people are just deceiving each other. But again, it's so boils on the fact that people are foolish. They are really foolish. They don't know how to play the game. Imagine being manipulated and abused. The same man that you're supposed to build your future. You are being used, abused, and being given the very same money and betray your people. It's sad, actually. It's, yo, it's sad. I don't even know how they're going to walk on the streets. But I guess it's Zimbabwe people don't care anymore. I mean, others are just looting every day. And they walk away, and they get away with it, and they come back, they treat you, they play you, and they just do. Everyone does, you know, as he pleases. But I love, this way it reminds me of the book of Judges, you know. Before God destroyed the country, the Bible says everyone was doing what they was right in their own eyes. That's what is happening in Zimbabwe. Are you surprised? Everyone is doing what is right in their own eyes. As long as I can get the position, I don't care. These ones can just wake up in the morning now. They are saying they are now presidents. So that can show you they've always crying for positions. Now Chamiso was right. <clears throat> he was right. They've always been desperate for positions. Now they don't know who can be the leader. They're fighting among themselves. Now all of them, all of them are all presidents. Sad. It is sad. But now what was interesting is that some PF sent out a message today and said, now that Mr. Shavangu is done. We now see his handlers coming out. So this was Zanu PF Patriots, their, their page. And people responded immediately and said, hey, don't play us. We know it's you behind all these shenanigans. We know it's you. Because you remember they were celebrating Mafume last time. You know, they were literally clapping. And they said, no, Mafume is the right one. So they removed Makone. Ian, they removed the other mayor until he was there. And they were like, yes, finally we have the right candidate for for the mayor position it's interesting it's really really interesting everything right now is just boils down to the fact that people think zimbabwe will wait for 2028 and have the same drama in a different uh, you know script wrong and people are not going to buy it remember i don't i don't think zimbabwe will buy 20 before 2024 there'll be solutions we'll be out of this nonsense it's nonsense with all respect, and I'm not saying this has nothing to do with politics, it's nonsense. People who can't even see how much the country is stuck, they're just focusing on drama after drama. No, this is not worth of our time, honestly. You can see, the, now you see that, honestly, that's why I said from the beginning, I must give it to, to Professor uh, Gifty Mugano for saying the truth. You can see the cars that are being given to individuals right now. I guess that Kandoro was right. That is a political thing. It's all about power, giving people cars to manipulate. It's a mind game, manipulation. It's as simple as that. Because you know what? They've realized that Zimbabweans are dumb. Zimbabweans are stupid, who accept anything, who sell their soul and be stuck for decades, still being bought. I'm not surprised when Nelson Chamisa said, I remember he said that, um, he said, they will never, they will never, you know, run out of people who are willing to sell their soul. 
Are you surprised? He was right. How many people are selling their souls? Every day, people are selling their soul. And we still remain stuck. Something has to give. We have to move forward. This is not what we expect. Honestly, it doesn't make no sense. This is crazy. Like, people are crazy. Now everyone is just crying for cause. But again, when you're dumb, that's how people do. They'll play you. It's a, it's a mind game. Takupai mota. Then imato kanganwa. Time is moving. The country is dilapidating. Things are falling apart. No roads. Money is being looted daily. And they come with a change. They give you the change. They use you to do their dirty work. May God have mercy. You know what I'm going to pray for? Let me tell you. You need to pray for one another. And you need to pray that people must... I think... I don't know if who watch or something. Like the foolishness is getting deeper and deeper. People are so dumb. People are stupid. They are just foolish. It's really sad. Like honestly, can you see that you are being used? Can't you see? This is why they say deep with, you know, embedded within deception is a blinding agent. You can't see. You are being deceived. You can't see. You can't see. Just like that. Look what happened with the triple C. People sold their souls for money. What else? For money. At the expense of elders, of the poor, orphans who are dying without food. Right now, the country as we speak this year is terrible because there's this El Nino thing. I saw many people literally posting the pictures of their, of their maize. Things are drying up because there's no rain. When you're behaving the way you're doing, God can never send rain in a country like that. We are cursed. Something has to give. It's a curse. What is that? What are we doing? What is that? What is that? People investing how much? Like investing their money. Last year, you remember on the campaign trail, young people, all elders slept at polling stations, believed in this. And my lawyers, my professors, my professions, sold the struggle and you expected the rain to rain no it doesn't work like that god doesn't work like that you're gonna have to repent this country has to repent to god if we actually it's too much man it's, it's it doesn't make sense i don't even know what the church is doing not telling the truth but hey yo we're gonna have to stop what we're doing here this is gonna put us in danger because if we don't change god will stop us and when he stops us the 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 cost is going to be very heavy yeah, Yo, you know when God is angry? Let me tell you, when Yahweh is angry, ask the ones who messed him up with him before. They were destroyed. He can run down the whole country in a split second. Check what happened in Israel and Palestine. Again, this kind of behavior that people are doing without stopping is going on and on and on. It's not stopping. It's heartbreaking. I'm even becoming emotional. Because it doesn't make sense, like... I'm like, I'm going to look at these people and say, do you want me to wash your brain? Are you crazy? How can you do that? Stop that. We have to cross over. But if you keep taking dirty money, guys, if you keep on doing what you're doing, we are going absolutely nowhere. You are messing the future of young people. Mr. Nube, Mr. Beatty, my core, I pray of God, and I'm telling you as a sister, and say, be in mind, God is watching you. You have ruined it. Not, it's not about Chamisa. It's about people who committed themselves to the struggle. People invested their soul. People worked so hard. They were expecting change. People travel. Like literally. Some came from Europe. Because they, they had faith that we were going to come out of this mess. And you knew what you were doing. Wasting people's time. Abusing elders. Look today, we have our family members, our brothers and our sisters who don't have shelters as we speak. People are being kicked out of their homes because of you. Because you keep showing that there are so many gullible people within us. Until we stand up and say, no, 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 this is not who we are. Take your money, but I'm going to stand for the truth. When we say principles should reign supreme, that's the only way that we cross over. 
You cannot cross over. Think about the poor. Some people don't have a place right now. It, it is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking, honestly. I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. I can't believe it. Like I'm looking at people that I think are mature and elders that should show us the way, but they're dumb. They're, they're, they know absolutely nothing. Said. But I know there'll be a way out. I've heard many people say something is gonna happen soon. So whatever the plan is, it's not going to work. Something's gonna give. People are fed up. Zimbabweans are really fed up. It's not working. Every five years we're having the same drama. It is really painful. We need to move forward. So let's look at other people's comments really about this warm mess here. So check and it said the fixation of fear of one man only underscores the weakness of Mnangagwa and his own PF. Chamisa and her party, Agango Mira Pavan, Nevan, Nevan, the political capital that keeps them awake every day. Chamisa does not have a political party. It's just the people who are hanging out. Everyone is just with Chamisa. I don't even know what it means and, and, and the bodies are doing because they have no people. They have nothing. Maybe they're just waiting for, my, for the money. Sad. It's a case. Very sad indeed. All right. So I don't know what happened between BT and Hopo because BT and Hopo have been really the real bodies. For real. Real bodies. And all of a sudden, I just saw that there was a distance because... Uh, you know, Hopo just went quiet. He started bastardizing that anyone who saw it would get the sister to PF was evil. So I guess Senator Bidu got angry because they were very, very close. So he said five things. <clears throat> Number one, who is Secretary General for the Triple C faction with three acting presidents? Number two, which faction will Shavangu, um, which faction will Shavangu who remains a political fraud go with? Number three, which faction will get party funds from parliament as the legitimate opposition recognized by the ZANPF government? Number four, why is Nelson Chamisa's face too on the party's communications? Keeping it there acknowledges Chamisa's political potency, doesn't it? Any self-respecting group of people will not continue using a face of a person who has quit their party and whose politics they don't agree with. Number five, why are CIOs more associated with the other faction unless we now have a state-controlled opposition? My view, the faction that aligns with Shavangu is finished politically both home and abroad because he violated democracy by removing legitimately elected members of parliament. If things remain the way they are, all factions are in the political departure lounge unless something dynamic happens. And that is exactly what some PF wants and we will be helped with. Welcome to reality. This is why I said, honestly, and I'm not going to buy it, because I'm not part and parcel of this nonsense, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that something will give. I don't think that this can carry on, y'all. We can get another five years of this nonsense. Like, from, uh, it's, like it's, Zimbabwe becomes very toxic, and it's really embarrassing. It is so humiliating that we, we, can't, we can't just get out of this mess. But... Every person who have digged their hands in the, in the jar of corruption, they're going to pay it very heavily. Unfortunately, I've said it, every person who have been sowing a seed of evil in the country, they're going to pay it very heavily. Time will tell. It's just a matter of time, and the time is going to be very soon. Peter said, I will never support sellouts of the people's struggle. Those who are in pursuit of personal benefits and power causes the people to lose heart fought for constituencies through senseless recourse and in the process cause the death of Pastor Messiah, Dibi Makauraya. Very sad indeed. S some people died because of greedy individuals. I don't even know how they, they wake up in the morning. Some of these people are fathers. Like they've got children. They don't even understand the case that come with their actions. That their kids will pay. They don't get it. Your kids are going to pay it heavily. These kids, I'm sorry, I feel pity for the kids of these thugs and evil men in Zimbabwean women. I feel, I feel pity for the kids because these children are going to pay it very heavily. I'm sorry to say this, but it's a reality. I don't know why pastors are roaming around, you know, um, you know, the leaders in the country can't tell them the truth that you may not pay for this, but your children will pay for your evil. The kids are going to pay. 
It said, the schools you are taking them will not save them from the wrath of God. The money that you are leaving for them will not save them from the wrath of God. Money is not everything. Houses is not everything. The principles that govern life. But Chipo said, no be beaten my core, my core. Is that my core or my core? <laughs> will each president for 90 days ahead of Congress, worth noting that two of the three once led their parties that each fell flat on the ground, to the ground, sorry. Uh, will they keep Chemisa's face? Are you surprised? What a shame. I just hope we are playing. I Honestly, I hope, I just believe, I just hope this is a, this is just a joke. Maybe that's the ambiguity that we had. Um, I just hope it is. Because if it's not, yo, then yeah, something's wrong. <laughs> it may be, you know, strategic ambiguity. You never know. We, who knows? We don't know. But I'll tell you what shocks me actually later on from Ziyami Ziyami. Will they survive beyond Monzora's life cycle? An obligate um, parasite in de is dependent on its host for its survival and reproduction. And it is unable to complete its life cycle or persist without the precedent, pre presence of that specific host. It, what's going on in the country now can just prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the country is broken. That oh, I'm very worried about uh, the future more than anything else. And I, now I think I respect Kudam Sasiwa, because Kudam Sasiwa said this. I remember, uh, was, he said this it was last year. He said that, you know, it's just that we are getting rid of the old, and it's a new software that is actually has to be um, inserted. He was right. I can see here, uh, we can't go anywhere with this nonsense. But this, okay, these elders, I've lost my respect for them. I don't look, I look, I don't look at them like human beings. I don't. I lost my respect for them. But Shala and Gusa are faction are fighting for the money. So they said former Pumula MP, Blawai Albert Mshanga, he has lambasted Washman Nove Tendai B Tend Linet Karenyu Hore for imposing themselves as the new rotational interim leaders of the fast dying opposition Triple C, saying this shows they are unprincipled, are opportunistic, and power hungry. Reacting to the announcement that Nove is not interim party leader on a 90 day. A rotational arrangement with BT and, and Hore until Congress. Mutlanga said he's disappointed that the seasoned and respectful politicians of Nwe BT and Hore cessation have now become merchants of chaos. I've respect for Professor Nwe, Tendai BT and Lynette, um, Mutlanga said. I respect them just the same way as I respected President Nosun Chamisa before his departure. So I'm disappointed with what they have done. This is an embarrassment to say the least. We can all see uh, these people disappointed me. Like my horror is even worse. She's a woman. She was pretending dancing with those. You know, I remember that man, you know that old man was singing that um man. You know, when they were singing a song, Rugare, we are you remember that song Rugare Adichaida Namo God. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Why am I being okay? Sorry, I'm becoming emotional. It's it's heartbreaking, honestly. I just pray that um, there must be a way out, honestly, because who our people have been through the most, honestly, they've been through the most. Um, if I can remember, I, I don't know, um, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry that I have to become emotional, but yeah. I don't think we've got souls in the people don't have soul. They don't have like 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 I don't understand people. Honestly, I don't. I'm trying to understand, but I don't understand. That um 
Please say it. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm just an emotional person by nature. Oh, God help me. All right, yeah. Said. But anywho, God is good. <laughs> He's good. We'll come out of the situation. Relax. We'll come out. We'll come out. Very soon, we are closer than you can ever think. All right, so moving on. Um, Pet says, so let's see who's on PF through capture institutions, including parliament. Recognize who's on PF stick to Shavangu or will Shavangu subject himself to the new group? And where is the membership? Do they accept these people as their leaders? But what a coincidence. This is what was interesting this morning. Apparently, you know, Daily News is actually the state machination. Is their paper, you know, the Daily News. Um... <laughs> So they are now saying that government to register political parties. You know, remember, because Nature Chamber says not saying anything. Now they're claiming that they're going to register political parties. You know what is so sad about this is, I'm, 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 I'm actually seeing that there's something, there's a disconnect between literally the political party names and or politics in general and the people. You know, you look at a person like Kazembe Kazembe or Ziambi Ziambi. Who talks to people like he's talking to animals? Like he, this man acts like he's got, he has got the world in the palms of his hands. Like he's, he's controlling people's life when they breathe and when they don't breathe. This man. He talks to people like he's talking to nothing. You know, like he's literally saying, um, Zeke has already conferred with parliament that authorities are considering putting in place a new law that will um, compel all political parties operating in the country to be registered. The chief elections office of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, um, Utolile Silagwana, Silagwana, sorry, confirmed to the Daily News yesterday that they had already approached the parliament on the matter. This comes as the main opposition, Triple C, which is, is experiencing a worsening fighting within Senge, well, no, with Sengeso Shamangu. You see what's so hate, what, what's breaking my heart is gaslighting. You know, like looking at people like they're stupid, like they don't even know that they're just fooling and wasting our time, literally. The gaslighting, you know, like looking at Zimbabweans, like they don't think, oh, they are, they are foolish. When are these men going to pay for the evil that they're doing? Guys, you must put it on record. I can't wait for a day that I'm going to say to Mr. Ziambi, Ziambi, are you surprised? Because these were your seeds that you saw. Are you surprised? Does this surprise you that you are where you are now? Even his children, thank God, we are still young, we'll be alive, we'll be watching. I'm going to remind your kids in the future that are you shocked that your parents were acting like they are gods? It's time for you to pay for the evil of your parents. That's how it works. You saw evil, you're going to have to reap evil. Non-negotiable. That's how it works in life. I don't know why people can't tell them the truth. This wicked man... Who carry on treating people like nothing, like trash? They need, to, honestly, their day should come. It must come very soon. Now, to my surprise, with the issue of the Chinese, you have seen that Chinese are literally pushing some of our people off their lands. You know, we spoke about it yesterday when they're telling them that you don't have title deeds. Because people are like, Chinese people are chasing us out of our land. That was Newsday reported. And, um, now, Joshua Maponga is saying something completely interesting here. That China has got intention. They have intention to literally come in so that they can take over most of the things in Africa because they know that they're overpopulated. But I wanted you to listen to Joshua Maponga. And I don't really, you know, I, I love his brain, but sometimes when he doesn't want to address some issues in Zimbabwe, it, it actually doesn't make sense to me, you know? Why is he You're always good at talking about all the things, but he, or all the countries, other people, but that's when I talk about what's going on in Zimbabwe. Take a listen. These are not just here to expand land issues. They're here to reorganize a population uh, preservation of their own nation in other countries. They're overpopulated now, so they're pushing some of them here. Not only that, it's also a 30 year plan to take over certain parts of Africa. So the prisoners that are being sent here to come and work, they don't bring their wives, they come alone. So of the 153, 400,000 Chinese that have come with the 3, 4, 5, 11 billion investment, that number could be much more. All of them are bachelors. The only few executives have brought their wives 
and the rest are prisoners and bachelors who now are making children in Africa. And these children will be Chinese and African, but being African, these children are Chinese who are going to be educated in our system, who will receive scholarships to go back to China and come back and become presidents and ministers in Africa and by right they are citizens because we're born here. Oh. It's a strategy. Oh. In 30 years time you will call me back. I hope I'll be still be able to talk and you will recite this when you have the first vice president, the first minister, the first president in one of the African countries being a crossbreed between Chinese and African. I mean, are we seeing this happening? Yeah. Go to villages and you see those children running up and down. In Zimbabwe, we have them. In Uganda, you have them. In Kenya, you have them. It's insignificant now. Let's not talk much about mm. it. There are women right now who are pregnant with Chinese kids. There are some who are breastfeeding Chinese kids. There. And it's going. It's going. We saw it in Uganda, Ghana, the Rollings, the colored guy. How did a colored man end up as a president of a country? There's nothing. We saw it in Botswana. How did Sesterza Kama, Kama become the president when he's a colored? His mother is British and his father was uh, Tswana and the father was a president. Two generations later, he became the president himself. So isn't this nothing funny? This is exactly what is up. I'm not surprised because I know, I remember there's a member of parliament in South Africa here. Yeah? Actually, he's for D is it ANC? Yes, he's a she's a Chinese, and people were questioning her, but because she's got a citizenship, she's a member of parliament. Now we are you surprised that Chinese people are chasing our people out of their land? You know they're like they do as they please. I can't even go to China and do as I please. I've heard many people say you get treated like trash in China. There are people who went to school that said if there ever been people that are ruthless and wicked and evil are Chinese people. You can see when people work for them, how much they earn. They earn peanuts. They treat black people like they are nothing. And they're the people that we are rolling a red carpet for them to do as they please. I don't have a problem with them coming to work, but don't forget that they also, you know, uh, you remember when uh, when they, they sent out a statement, the government that they are going, if you want a citizenship, you should be paid five thousand dollars. Do you remember that? Was it not about two weeks ago? <laughs> and two, I mean, five thousand dollars is nothing to these people. It's like, oh yeah, that's their child is, um, you know, for, for 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 lunch or breakfast. They don't have a problem paying that five thousand dollars. They get citizenship. You now they are driving people out of their land. They've been there for years. Said. I something we have to give. Something we have to give. Honestly, something we have to give. No family life. If you remember, you remember the uh, the the law that was passed that you either be marrying if you want to marry, if you don't want to pay a wall, you can just take a woman. <laughs> I'm not gonna uh, I'm, I can't, I can never, me personally, advise you to do that. I'm not going to go for free, y'all. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to go for free. Y'all, me, no, not me. I don't know who's going to go for free, but me, I'm not going to go for free. <laughs> I don't know my father ever accept that. My dad won't accept. But anywho, Chief Charumbira is talking about the issue of this marriage that, you know, some people, if you don't want to pay a level up for someone's child, there'll be consequences. Like I'm talking to my brothers here. And also girls who are cohabitating and all. <laughs> if things if things get ugly, there will be consequences. So let's hear out Chief Sharumbira. You know, he's not a perfect man, but just take the name out. <laughs> Berigi <laughs> I was going to have some time here after we have another, for example, over Sheikh. 
All right, I'm also still a firm believer that marriage is really about, you know, bring people together. I'm a firm believer. It's not really much about the money and the things that we think about. Uh, it's, you know, but I also, um, you know, I don't like people who cohabitate much, especially in our culture. Our culture don't really condone cohabitation, but people do it anyway. When they meet in diaspora, as we're just going to cohabitate. But if things go ugly, you know, anything can happen. Like, I'm, I'm terrified. I always say to people, I can only imagine if I cohabitate with someone. What if he can fall or maybe something happens? <laughs> you can fall, maybe a heart attack or something. What am I going to be saying to the people? You know, I hate cohabitation, but people do it. So what he's, what he's simply saying is that please, please try to do things right. You know, it's not even about money. Even if you've got little, at least show respect to the family. Ask properly. You know, meet the families. I know some people love to do so. Like this cohabitation that you do in I, I hate it with passion. It's not my thing. But some people doing it. But make sure you just do things right. Especially women, we have a lot to lose. You know, men can, can navigate life one way or the other. And they can get away with things. But... Let me tell you, please, please, brothers and sisters, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. I've met young people uh, who, who tell me very heartbreaking stories. So when I'm advising you, I know exactly what I'm saying, that sometimes things can go ugly and you won't even love life. So most importantly, just do things the right way. Do things the right way. Girls, stop cohabitating with this man. Especially Zimbabwean men. Zimbabwean men, um, you know, you know, our culture don't condone it, you know, cohabitation. It doesn't, because you know, when we were growing up, remember, in the rural, don't 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 talk about here, because I'm mean, like in diaspora. Diaspora, you can, you know, play your cards. You know, nobody knows what's going on. Like I can stay with the man, though, like my dad doesn't know, but because I respect my daddy, you know, I swore to my mom when she passed away that I would never, I would respect my daddy and I would respect you even in your grave. I don't believe in cohabitation. I would never do it. It's one thing or the other. It's the right thing or nothing. I don't cut corners. But let me say this. I've seen people cohabitate in diaspora because, you know, in our culture, if you, if, if you can just go in and, and maybe not even come back home, they can say, go back where you come from. So, kera kohaba. You understand? That was a traditional culture because they understood the importance of respect. But uh, in 2024, people can kick the shoes. I know I can do what I want. But let me tell you, very soon we are all going to wish the traditional way of living was better. Because where the world is heading, things are getting tough and tough by day. Because of too much pleasure. Too much pleasure can be very, very uh, costly. You know, be careful. Too much pleasure is dangerous. There's more to life than pleasure. There's more to life. I remember the doctor who spoke. I don't know if I shared this story with you. You went on Twitter, he's a Zimbabwean doctor, and it was like it breaks his heart every time because most of the guys who are coming back, or guys or women as well, you know, come back to Zimbabwe. Most of these people are coming back with the gifts of, of diseases to their parents. You know, then coming back at least with something. They're literally coming back home sick. And I pray that um, you're really going to consider living your life right. So that at least you don't bring shame to your parents. Honestly, try to live your life right. It takes commitment to life. It takes sacrifices. It takes boundaries. Be a person with boundaries. You know, not everything that you see that is glitter is gold. You know, if you look outside, you can see behind me. You know, it's Joe which was big here. You see behind me there. <laughs> There's nothing there. You know, absolutely nothing. You see, all there. You see the lies and all. Upon a chili pop. I'm telling you facts. Apana. 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 Absolutely nothing. Apana chili Don't waste your life. All these, uh, you know, this whole season will pass. 
You know, when we're getting older, we want to go back home because ancestors are calling. You know what I mean? And the way you've wasted your life. There's nothing. Apana, apa, apana. Akuna shiriko. Nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Prioritize your future. Prioritize your sanity. Prioritize your health. Prioritize your peace. Prioritize your dignity. Prioritize your greatness. You know what I'm saying? That's all I can say. So he's right. Chief Charumbira Vati Musa Turava Nave Vanu. Musa Grani Vanave Vanu. Musinga Badare Mari. Musinga Badare Roda. Musa Terra Shogatua Wani Government. You know, Kana Sengari Ku Badare Gera. Hey, Iwa Varu Ku Badare Roda for their kids. And they are telling you to do the wrong thing so that tomorrow you'll be sitting with a dead body in your house when you haven't paid the money. Don't do it. Follow traditional or culture. Do the right thing. Don't cut corners. There's no reason for cutting corners. Life is too short. But at the end of the day, God is for us all. It is always there for us. So we should do the right thing. Thank you, guys. And thank you so much for tolerating my emotional, you know, this emotional little me. You know, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, it's, yeah. I take things very personal. And because of my heart and my desire to see Zimbabwe, when everyone is happy, when everyone is free, when there's not all these gimmicks and abuse and manipulation, I love to be, have to be around sanity. I love peace. I love honesty people. I love integrity. You know, I know people can make mistakes. I've done a lot of them. But at least be, think about the next person. Consider others. It's for those that does not have. We have orphans, guys, in orphanages. Some who don't even, who don't even know what to eat tomorrow. Can you just think for the poor? Look what's happening with El Nino. Think about the rural folks. Some can't even, they don't even know how to, they don't have Vaseline. Listen, I know what I'm talking about, yeah. So that's why I'm very, very, very emotional about this situation because I've seen it. I've witnessed to give a person a bar of soap. You know that green bar of soap? Listen, I know what I'm talking about. And you are an attorney. a lawyer. You're right, man. I'm a professor, you're okay. the poor. It's what hurts me the most. We don't think about the poor in the midst of us. It's what we need to put first. We should prioritize those people and make sure we cater for them first. I don't have a problem. I can sleep on the streets here. I'm a single 40 year old person. I can navigate life. But when I think about those that I need, it breaks my heart. Right now, imagine if we could have done our elections properly. Make sure that we select the right people who had the heart for, the, for our people. Where would we be today? Maybe many people from the diaspora would come in and inject money there and help. But people can't because there are no structures. Thieving all over the place. Thugs are threatening people. Nothing is working. When are we going to come together and fix this country for the sake of destiny and the sake of our future? I don't have a problem. Don't worry about me. If they want to kill me, they can kill me for the truth and we're going to meet in heaven because we are all going to die. Who's not going to die? Well, I, all of us, we're going to die anyway. So I'm not worried about... Don't worry, I'm safe, y'all. Don't worry. No. <laughs> Before they kill me, they'll be dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you're not playing here. Yeah. We mean business, y'all. We mean business. So I'm just saying to you, Please, let's consider the poor. Brothers and sisters, let's pray for those which I miss and everybody around us. I'm sure something is going to give. There seems to be something that is playing in the background. But you know, you have to play, you know what I mean? Like, it's a game of chess. But soon, you will know that God is with us. I love you all. And bye for now.